All right, Hall of Fame weekend in Cooperstown. It's so special to be there. I love making the trip up to uh, Cooperstown. In fact, last year, I see my buddy Tim Kirching get inducted in the Hall of Fame. A special event if you're a baseball fan. And honestly, you can appreciate that history as soon as you get into town. And nobody can appreciate the history more than my man, Harold Reynolds. H, it's great to see you made the four-hour drive up there. And you're going to take us to some of your favorite Hall of Famers there that are enshrined, right? Yeah, no, it's always a cool time to get here. Actually, you're going you're gonna to get a chance to see a couple interviews I already taped. One with Jeff Bagwell, one with Greg Maddox. They played against McGriff. They play, actually, Maddox played with McGriff. They both played against Scott Rowland. They have a lot of great things to say about those two guys. But every year, we come up to Cooperstown, and as we're sitting up here, I see all these guys walking through. And actually, a lot of Hall of Famers that I played with or played against, and I get a chance to see this. You know, we sit out there and we do the whole ceremony. And I, at one year, I was like, there's 53 guys that I played against. Couldn't believe it. So I want to tell you a couple anecdotes of certain guys. Paul Molitor and Robin Yount. Robin Yount may have been the best player I ever saw when I first came up. Unbelievable talent. But when I was in A-ball, he and Paul Molitor both, there was a strike that year, came to watch us play. We were playing in County State in Milwaukee, and they came to the game. I couldn't believe it. I wore number four because of Paul. George Brett, nobody squared the ball up more than George. You know, we talk about all this barrel stuff. Please, George Brett hit the ball on the nose hard, and if he did it consistently, he got a lot of hits, obviously. All right, let's keep moving on because there's so many guys. Rod Carew, my favorite player as a kid, and he became my hitting coach in Anaheim. He used to walk down the dugout and go, you guys don't see it? What are you looking at? He's tipping every pitch. Way beyond what we could even think or imagine he would see stuff in the glove. Wade Boggs, he knew exactly how many hits he needed to get every time he stepped to the plate, I swear. He would hit the ball just out of reach of players, but he knew if he was hitting 340, I need three hits tonight, I'm gonna be at 350. I mean, he knew it all. He was fantastic to be around. Randy Johnson, great story here, guys. You're gonna love this. All right, before he became the big unit, he was always afraid he might hit somebody. So one day we're in Texas, he goes to lunch with Nolan Ryan. Nolan Ryan says, look, next time you get a guy 3-0, hit him, throw it at him. Watch, they'll get out of the way. Well, that was the birth of the unit. And next thing you know, he's throwing no hitters. So yeah, that was Randy Johnson. Let's keep it moving. Greg Maddox, this guy hit me in the knee in spring training. I'll talk to him about it in the interview, you hear about it. But he drilled me in the knee. He threw harder than most people think, too. He was mid-90s. And because of the control, I swear he did it on purpose. Let's move on from Maddox. All right, as we continue on, Jim Rice. Now, I'm going to go through the brawl session here. Brawls, I mean fighting. Jim Rice had great power. We get it. But we had a brawl with the Red Sox one day in Seattle. He reached down one arm and just threw me out of the pile. Whoop! There you go. Now, speaking about brawls, I'm playing in Baltimore. Mike Messina is our pitcher. I got thrown out a couple times. Rick Sutcliffe says, go pick somebody out. He drilled Bill Hausserman. Now, I just left the Mariners. I've been there 10 years. We get in this big brawl. But it wasn't about me. Yeah, I got in there. So did everybody else. But it was more about Cal Ripken. This is the piece of the story people don't know. The next day, we come out, and I'm telling you, Cal could, did not take batting practice, didn't take ground balls, and we were thinking, he might not make it. Well, fortunately, he played through it, as he always did with injuries, and the streak was, well, two years later, he's waving at everybody. So that was Cal Ripken and the streak. But it was close, folks. He almost didn't make that game. Just remembering it, looking back. This is the cool stuff I see when I see guys at the Hall of Fame, all right, because you get a chance to reflect on a lot of different things with guys when you see them coming through. All right, I think I'm right down here. Dave Winfield. When I was a kid, my older brother Don played for the Padres, and he said, if you get in any trouble in the clubhouse, just go sit in Dave's locker, and they won't kick you out. So I got to watch games from sitting in the dugout. Well, it happened to be one game I'm sitting there. His roommate was Ozzie Smith, and Ozzie makes this unbelievable play against Jeff Burroughs. Yeah, I was in the dugout. He dies, bare hands this ball, makes the play. And I'll tell you what, I wouldn't have been in the dugout if it wasn't for sitting in Dave Winfield's locker and the clubhouse guy afraid of Dave. So thank you, Dave. I got to see one of the greatest plays ever. All right, Barry Larkin. We went to, the, to play the U.S.-Japan series, and it's Major League All-Stars against the Japanese All-Stars. First time I'd seen Barry Larkin, and he was the best player on that team. I went, man, this kid is special. That's when I knew he'd be a Hall of Famer. Alan Trammell, I'm going to end it right here. We're playing a game in Detroit. 
He hits a pop fly in the first inning. It bounces off. I miss it. I lose it in the light. Next time I said, if he hits another ball, I'm going to stay on that in case it, even if it hits me in the, yeah, it hit me in the head. And ricocheted for a triple. I was going to stay with it regardless. That was my Alan Trammell story. So as I see these guys getting announced, there's just certain little nuggets that come through ad now that I see different stories. That was only like 13 guys. I could be talking the rest of the show, but I got to throw it back to you. That's great, it for now. Great stuff. It's Bill Hasselman. God, I got to see that video again. You and the brawl. That was fantastic. And you're right. That Aussie play, one of the greatest things I've ever seen.